The trees and bushes here are literally filled with all sorts of species. We've just had a major fallout today. It's just been spectacular. How many of you guys knew that the coast of Texas was such a critical spot for migratory birds for the entire US and Canada? Did anyone know that? Come over here, guys. Careful, don't go too much in the bush because there's a lot of chiggers and things. You'll be fine. It's the rattlesnake you really got to worry about. This is a mist net, and it has all these different panels. And as the birds are flying through the forest here, they don't see this mist net. And they hit the net, and they just drop right in here. You come over here and just grab the, the legs like that, and you do what's called cleaning the feet. This is a chestnut-sided warbler. Have you ever seen a bird as beautiful as that, this close? Every bird I see like this, it's like it's the first time I've seen it. My name is Pete Mara. I'm the head of the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center. We're here at the Clive Runnels family Mad Island Marsh Preserve. It's a, it's a property that's owned and operated by the, the Nature Conservancy of, of Texas. black throated green and an indigo bunting in the net. You just don't see this color blue every day. This is a viri. Beautiful male Canada. Catbird and an oven bird. Hello, catbird. Welcome to the US. You can see this is the open Gulf of Mexico right here. Millions of songbirds are coming off of that open ocean after 16, 18 hours of flight. And this is the first thing they see is landfall here in these freshly greened up bushes and shrubs covered in insects. Beautiful food and fuel for so many of these migratory birds that are stopping over here to refuel and to get that critical energy for their northward migration. This black burning warbler just flew over the Gulf of Mexico, nonstop flight, at night. This bird weighs about the same as a, as a US quarter. One of the big mysteries that we're trying to solve is this mystery of migratory connectivity. Where do those birds actually migrate? What migratory routes do they use? What stopover areas do they use? And where do they winter? There are all these tools, almost forensic tools, that we can use to gain insights into the past history of these birds. You really need to understand where these different populations are throughout the annual cycle to understand the threats that they're facing, if you want to save these species. And that's what we're trying to do here, is ultimately collect the information that we need to save so many of these species that we're losing right before our eyes. All right, inside here is a uh, special bird. It's a bird that a lot of the people are studying right now, trying to figure out exactly why this species has been declining as rapidly as it is. This is a golden wing warbler. Just a tremendous species. Since 1968 or so, 70% of the population of golden wing warblers are now gone. They're not alone. Wood thrush, another species, 65% decline since 1968. Rusty blackbird, 90% decline since 1968. Kentucky Warbler, Common Nighthawk, the list goes on and on and on. This isn't a problem just in the US. It's not a problem just in Canada. These species occupy many different countries throughout their annual cycle. When these migratory birds make it to a place like this in Texas, one of the most amazing things to me is that that bird could have been flying over a jaguar or, or a taper or in a Mayan village just two weeks before. And so these birds, they connect cultures, they connect species in ways that we don't even understand yet. And that's, that's part of the magic of what we're trying to do here. It's part of the magic of the Migratory Connectivity Project. We're trying to make these connections because ultimately it's gonna be convincing the people through these wonderful biological stories about the importance of, of what we're trying to save here. We don't know if this bird wintered in Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Ecuador, 
We do know this Gulf Coast of Texas next to Louisiana are essential for these birds to refuel. So birds like this cuckoo, which has been on the planet for thousands of years, don't disappear in 20 years. What we want to try to communicate to people is that your backyard is tied to a backyard in Guatemala. We're all linked. We have to view our backyard as part of this greater good in this greater land area because that's really what it is.